I spent literally months making this video because I will not half ass a product review. So here we are, five or six months down the line, I'm here to give you the full review of the viral Instagram brands that I'm constantly advertised on social media. The irony is not lost on me that I'm currently drinking out of a Glossier water bottle that I purchased with my own money. So let's chat. So I don't know about you, but certain brands are advertised to me time and time again on Instagram, on Facebook and on Pinterest. I can't escape them. So I thought it was time to invest some of my hard earned cash and actually try some of these and give you honest feedback on what they're actually like. Hello, my name is Lisey Moon. Subscribe if you have not already and hit the bell notification if you are already subscribed. I love that I said I was not gonna make many product focus videos and I'm actually bringing you like two or three in a row, but this one has been worked on for actual months. So let's jump right in and I will tell you about the most disappointing product I tried on this fun, experience. Let's talk about Estrid. If you've somehow managed to avoid their adverts, Estrid is a razor company. They describe themselves as your new best friend. Estrid is a fair priced, quality and cruelty free razor that is designed specifically for women. They say there is a gap in the market for a women's razor that fulfills all of this criteria and that Estrid fills that gap. I was targeted on social media by ads for Estrid for months and months. I don't think I could log on to Instagram, Pinterest or Facebook without being targeted with an Estrid ad. And alongside the influencer partnerships they were doing, this brand was everywhere. And it seems like a really sweet deal. Like I'm definitely interested in a razor subscription that is more sustainable, better for the planet, cruelty free and affordable. I believe I signed up around September last year. Estrid is ultimately a subscription service. So when you sign up, you start by getting a starter kit, which includes a stainless steel handle and then a subscription model with how many razor heads you will need per like times you shave. So you pick your subscription based on how often you want to change your blade. I went for the every second month option, which is the medium of the two options. I believe you can go once a month and once every three months as well. The every second month option is recommended for people who shave a few times a week which is me. I also ordered the travel case. <laughs> Lol, like I thought I would be doing some traveling. As I said, I ordered midway through 2020, so I've actually had two refill packs arrive since I did my first order. The starter kit came to 7.95 with free shipping and the additional razors cost 9.95 and I've been billed that every two months. So let's start with the positives. The stainless steel razor handle itself is lovely. It feels luxurious, it feels premium, it's heavy, nice to hold, and it comes with this little suction uh, holder that you stick to the side of your bath which is actually really good as well, although it does fall off if you don't keep it in a dry enough place. So make sure it's on like the far end of your bathroom. So yeah, mine falls off the tiles every so often and decimates everything beneath it because it's so heavy. Even though I keep it in a dry spot, I guess sometimes the humidity just gets to it. They also have five color options to choose from on the stainless steel razors so you can kind of express yourself <laughs> and pick a color of your choice. Now let's talk negatives. So the main one for me, and I have surveyed other friends who also use the Estrid razor and they've reported the same thing, is that after one or two uses, the razor head goes blunt. In fact, people were bringing it up to me as I mentioned I was making this video. So if I wanted to have a sharp enough shave every time I use the razor, I would have to change it about once a week, which in my opinion is not very sustainable. Like it genuinely causes discomfort if I use it and it's a week or two old. Like it goes blunt. It tugs at my skin, it creates ingrown hairs. It is not good. If I'm gonna change the razor head that often, I feel like I may as well go back to a disposable razor because it ends up being the same in terms of wastage. Another negative is the combination of the razor head release button and the really slippery outer side of the razor. So naturally, as you would expect on a higher quality razor, there is this border of, of like slipperiness you know, meant to be like moisturizing, I guess. However, this outer ring of slippery goodness on the razor actually melts <laughs> when it gets too hot. So that is every shower that I will ever take. And I don't take showers that hot because I have eczema. When this slippery stuff melts, sometimes it can go onto the handle and you can accidentally push the razor head release button. I've done this twice now and just launched my razor head towards me. And so I released the head and then had to stop shaving my legs halfway through. One time I even tried to clip it back on while I was in the shower, but obviously it was so slippery, it slipped and cut my hand. I can't explain why it doesn't work. There's something so weird about the gunge that comes off of this slippery part of the razor head. And the razor head release button is just way too easy to hit, especially when you're shaving your legs. I just can't express enough. The slippery gunk goes everywhere. Also, your stubble gets stuck in the dried slippery gunk. You can't rinse it out. <laughs> so you just have like sprinkles of your hair like stuck to your razor. It's just gross. So once the slippery gunk has melted on your razor head and your hair is stuck in it, 
you can't dry it. So I don't know how they expect people to travel with it. If you're like a business tripper and you're going somewhere for one night only, you are not gonna be able to dry that razor off. I've tried drying it with a towel and with toilet roll, neither worked. The fluff of the towel just gets stuck in the gunk along with your stubble and the gunkiness in itself. It's just grim. Maybe I'm using it wrong, but it's been six months now, so I would hope I've got the hang of it. Going forward, I think I'm gonna try and find alternative razor heads because the body of the razor, the stainless steel handle is really good. It's just the thing that you need to use to shave that isn't good. So my moon racing, is two out of five on this one. It's affordable, which is amazing. The handle's great. The actual product that you need to work does not work. Okay, now let's move on to Function of Beauty skincare. Full disclaimer, I have worked with Function of Beauty in the past on their hair care products. I really like their hair care but I actually haven't tried their skincare. So Function of Beauty is a cruelty-free brand that offers custom hair care and skincare to their customers. Each product is individually tailored to fit their customers' needs. They describe themselves as the world leader in customizable beauty. Their site says, with Function of Beauty, you decide what goes into your formula and what doesn't and what you get out of it. Because who knows what you need more than you? I love that bit of copy, I think it's great. So skincare is a relatively new release from them. They had a hair care line that did super, super well, but skincare is fairly fresh. And I haven't seen anyone test it yet, so I thought I'd try. I'm advertised to them primarily on YouTube by other creators, they do a lot of paid partnerships. And I even did one of those integrations. But I do also get served paid ads by them on Facebook and Instagram. So you start by taking a skin quiz, which asks you about your skincare concerns, your problems, your skin type, and from all of these assessments, builds a skincare regimen for you. You can select a fragrance-free formula and you also put your name in there so it can put your name on the little bottle, which is quite cute. It offers you an initial selection of products, a face wash, a moisturizer, and an optional serum. On that page, it also lets you choose what kind of formula you'd like. So for me, it recommended that I use a foaming cleanser and a lotion, and I ended up changing the foaming cleanser to a jelly cleanser just because I prefer them. With the lotion moisturizer, they also offered the option of a cream and a gel. So the jelly cleanser was 19 pounds, the serum was 44 pounds, and the lotion was 30. I removed the serum, so I ended up just getting the cleanser and the lotion. They really encourage you to sign up to their subscription service. You have to pay five pounds shipping if you don't. And they recommend a refill every two months. So you'd be being charged 50 quid every two months, but I got the one off like products. So I just spent 49 pounds and then five pounds for shipping. So that's 54 total. I've always found that with Function and Beauty, their products take a little while to arrive, which makes sense because they're custom made. So mine took a week and a half to arrive in this particular instance. So let's start with the positives. The packaging is gorgeous. It's these beautiful ombre pastel bottles. They're really lovely looking and they kind of look luxurious while also feeling like a bit more normal. They just look really lovely in your bathroom. The next positive is the product actually worked. They really, really helped my skin. The combination of the cleanser and then the lotion as a daytime moisturizer, oh my goodness, it just cleared my skin up. I was having a really bad breakout and it helped enormously. I believe there's a tiny bit of salicylic acid um, in the moisturizer that really, it just really helped me. I listed my skin concerns, by the way, as redness, uh, hydration and acne like management. I've tried a lot of high-end skincare, so I feel like I've got a good <laughs> barrier for entry and a good basis off which to compare, and this definitely exceeded my expectations. This is just maybe a bit particular of me, but the pump isn't great on either bottle. I have to pump eight times to 12 times to get enough product from the cleanser to wash my face. And that's just one wash. If I wanted to double cleanse, that's 24 pumps. The other issue is the size of the products. I finished the lotion within a few weeks. It really didn't last very long. And for the price, I don't feel like that's great value for money. For the price you pay, the amount you receive is just not quite enough. And then there's this additional factor of the shape of the bottles. So they curve at the bottom. And I've actually had products uh, that are this shape before, for example, Glossier's Milky Jelly Cleanser. And with both of these products, you can't get the last 20% out very easily. You kind of have to unscrew your top <laughs> and scoop it out with the, with the straw. So the product feels even smaller for the price. I'm happy to pay a premium for my skincare, but I do expect a bit more product in return. So I ran out of the moisturizer within two or three weeks, but I'm still using the cleanser. I'm only halfway through. So I kind of wish the sizing had been a bit more balanced in these products so they ran out at the same time because I can totally envision <laughs> getting that subscription and having way too much cleanser left over and nowhere near enough moisturizer. So yeah, I wish the sizing had been more balanced or the products had been more evenly matched so they ran out at the same time. Due to the amount of product you get for the price, I don't know if I'd repurchase, which is such a shame as I really like the products. I'd probably go for another product on the market at the same price point and that same level of quality, but with just slightly more of it. So overall, I'm giving these guys a 3.5 out of five. The quality of the products I received was 10 out of 10, but unfortunately the sizing let it down a little bit. Absolute law of my life, 
We've still got another two pages of my notes to get through. <laughs> so the final brand is Beauty Pie. I am advertised Beauty Pie all the time, whether it's on Instagram, whether it's on Pinterest, whether it's on Facebook, those paid ads are everywhere. I can't avoid them. Beauty Pie is a members club that offers customers high quality makeup and skincare made at the same factories as well-known brands, but for a fraction of the price. They describe themselves as a luxury beauty buyers club. To sign up, you pick one of their membership options. I picked the £10 option, which meant I could shop up to £100 worth of product every month. This might all sound a bit confusing, and that is because it is. I think you might just have to deal with some hoovering sound in the background of this. I am so sorry. So basically, each product has a typical price and a members price listed beside it. So when they say you've got an allowance of £100, that is the allowance of the value of the typical price. So for example, let's say I want to buy a moisturiser and I'm on the £10 tier. The moisturiser has a typical price of 50 quid, but an actual members price of £12. I will only pay £12 for that moisturiser, but I will have used up half my monthly budget from my subscription. Does that make any sense? So I signed up to the £10 tier, and when I signed up, I was given an extra £100 allowance. So I had £200 in total to spend, and I went in. So I picked up eight products, which in total reached the typical price of £194, but I only spent, and let me check this, £55.84. The products arrived less than a week after I placed the order, super fast delivery, and the packaging was really nice. It felt premium, but it was very concise and all recyclable, which are things I really look for in products now. I don't want to be given huge boxes and excessive packing peanuts anymore. We're beyond that, it's not 2017. I'm not going to review every single product, as that could take an absolute age, but I am going to tell you a bit about the highlights and some of the lowlights. Something I think is worth mentioning, actually, that I noticed while I was browsing the site, is that a lot of the products are actually geared towards a slightly older demographic. There are types of products on the site that were really, really popular in the like early 2000s. For example, Shimmer Bricks, made famous by like Body Shop and Bobby Brown. And they've also got um, the kind of all-in-one palettes that I know Charlotte Tilbury does a version of as well. Charlotte Tilbury does an instant look in a palette and they do a very similar thing called a one palette wonder. I think these items are geared towards a more mature audience, which is something I don't actually see very often because a lot of the beauty brands that I buy from are very young consumer orientated. They're very trend-led, they're very innovative, which was really interesting to me because there's obviously a much wider range of consumers that use Beauty Pie. It's worth noting here that one of the main appeals of Beauty Pie is how similar some of their products are to products by big name brands. This is implied in that they use the same factories, but it's definitely discussed online a lot. You can go in any beauty forum or Reddit and you can see exactly what people think are dupes for what. So yeah, Beauty Pie never say directly that they offer dupes, but there are a lot of blog posts where you can find out the best apparent dupes for some really well-known big name brands. So let's talk about the products that impressed me. The Super Healthy Skin Daily Moisture Lotion was 10 out of 10, I really enjoyed it. It's a really nice classic traditional moisture lotion, gave me a good hit of moisture, especially in the evenings when I need it most, and also a protective layer for the mornings if I'm going outdoors. So yeah, it hit a really good spot for me of something that's a bit more rich, but didn't break me out. It had a very neutral scent, I can't actually remember if it was scented or not, I will check. And yeah, it also seemed to work really well for soothing my sensitive skin. It was a little small, I used it up again in a few weeks, same way I did with the Function of Beauty moisturizer, but it was only eight pounds, so I can't really argue with that. For the quality of the product, I think it's really good value. I loved the contour stick. Um, you can kind of see I'm wearing it today. I will definitely be using it for a while. I believe it's officially called like the Super Contour Gel. What's it actually called? The Quick Contour Super Gel. It doesn't come out like a gel. It's just a cream, a cream contour color. Bloody everything's happened today. Just had the post come. Okay, right, let's get back on this. It's officially called the Quick Contour Super Gel, but it's just a cream formula in a stick. I found the sponge pen applicator super easy to use and the shade was really good for me. It comes in, I believe, only two or three shades. Not ideal, so the range isn't that great. I really hope they increase their shade range in the future. But yeah, applies super evenly. I just use the far end of my beauty blender to blend it out. It's just really nice. It really reminds me of the Charlotte Tilbury sticks. I use one of their blush sticks and I love it. I'd definitely repurchase, especially as it was only £6.35, which to me is a bargain. And finally, another product I'm wearing today is the Collagen Lip Oil. This is a very nourishing gloss, basically, with a slight tint of colour. I've got the nude colour. I can't remember exactly what it's called. I'm getting more into my glosses and this one is really lovely. Non-sticky, super, super hydrating. The only thing I don't love about it is the scent. It's the same as if you ever bought the Kylie Cosmetics lip kits. This really intense synthetic marshmallow smell. But yeah, the finish is lovely, lasts well, super moisturising, not sticky. I can't remember exactly how much it was but I believe it was around £11. So yeah, overall, 
three products that I've come out with that I'm just like, Great, now to the products I didn't love. I had really high hopes for the Triple Beauty Liquid Luminizer, which by the way, why have they named it that? <laughs> what does Triple Beauty mean? However, I was quite disappointed by the product. It has a very, very metallic sheen. It was very Tin Man on me. I was hoping for something glowy or glossy. That's kind of how they advertised it. But no, it was metallic. It was a very bold highlighter. And it was super difficult to apply because you'd put the tiniest amount of this cream on and you'd be glowing. You'd be like a big board of traffic light. I'm not here to look like I've got a helmet on my face and I'm about to go into a battle as a Roman, like no. So that was just a straight up no from me. So I also ordered the Eau de Parfum, is that even how you say that? I actually don't know, EDP. So I bought the EDP sample set just to try four of the fragrances and they aren't it, they are not it. I was quite disappointed. It came with four fragrances. I'll read their names off because they're a bit funky. Lime, fig leaves and tea, apple, peony and cashmere, mandarin, cedar and freesia and love the obvious fourth fragrance. All of them just smell quite artificial, quite synthetic, and ultimately quite cheap, which is not what you expect for something claiming to be a premium product. I wonder if maybe the other fragrances or the candles might be better, but in the fragrance format, it was just not working. So overall, I was impressed by the service and the products. They can be hit and miss, but there wasn't anything I tried other than the fragrances that was outright just bad, across the board, bad. And especially not for the price I was paying. I guess it depends on whether you feel that the quality of products could justify spending an additional £120 a year on this kind of a subscription, and whether you'd be buying cosmetics frequently enough to justify that fee. If this kind of shopping would fit your profile as a beauty customer, then absolutely go for it, would really recommend. Just read lots of reviews beforehand. I personally cancel my subscription because I won't actually be buying that many products. I tend to use stuff to the end and then repurchase. So I'm not really as much of a tester anymore and I'm fortunate enough to get sent a lot of PR products as well. So I really am working through a lot of a lot of cosmetics anyway. I don't need to add more to my collection. However, I might start up the five pound subscription again just to get more of that moisturizer because it was very good. Overall, I would rate Beauty Pie a four out of five. Now I wanted to give you some final thoughts because when I was writing all of these notes, I kind of, just stuff crossed my mind. In making this video, and also in being exposed to a lot of these new disruptor direct-to-consumer brands that are angled at women in my daily life and in my work, I think I've realised that they are often overhyped and a lot of them under deliver, which kind of makes sense as they're aiming high and they're riding a wave created by really successful D2C disruptor brands, for example, Glossier. Well, not D2C, I think Milk Makeup's a great example and also Savage by Fenty or Fenty Beauty. These original brands have hit a really sweet spot of creating really great innovative products and really doing incredible branding. And that really appeals to this younger generation of beauty consumers like myself. But yeah, I'm always keen to try these new brands, but I do feel like I need to lower my expectations a little. Behind the gorgeous branding and the really heavy marketing, a lot of the time it's just a company trying to make a return and the branding and the advertising cost a lot of money. So they are gonna make compromises in other areas. Internally, I guess the assessment has been made that the image of the brand is more important than the quality of the product. And to some extent they're right because they will make more sales at the beginning. Will they retain customers? I don't know. It's a bit bleak, but ultimately it must work as I've got many friends who have bought into these brands after seeing their gorgeous branding and being advertised them time and time again. I think moving forward when it comes to buying into these brands, I'm going to look way more towards word of mouth reviews than anything else and try and avoid the things that appear the most in my feed unless I hear a direct review that says they're 10 out of 10. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know any other viral or Instagram brands you would like to see reviewed in the comments and then please Please, if you liked this video, give it a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and hit the bell notification if you are not to get updated when I next upload. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video.